name is George Barrister. I'm 54 years old. We're actually in New Orleans, Louisiana. And uh, I grew up about a mile and a half from where we're sitting right now. I played ball right here, um, basketball, football. Not baseball, because baseball, by the time I was nine years old, I was on a boat every summer with my dad. That's the way it was. You went to work. You was a ball, you went to work, as long as you could swim. <laughs> that was the rules. They had to be able to swim and didn't get seasick. I used to get seasick when we went in the Gulf. But I didn't have the option of going home. We went in the back and just puked and went to sleep. <laughs> and then the old man was rough. Man. And it was a rough, it was a rough time, a good time, though. It made you tough. I'm glad he was tough and hard on us because... Had he not been as tough as he was, I don't think I could have survived everything I survived. What is it about shrimping? Oh, it's just being on the water. It's fishing. It had being a freedom. It's to chase. You know, it's, it's the uncertainty that scares you, but it's the uncertainty that intrigues you. You know, you might go out there and catch a thousand pounds. You might not. You might go out there and don't come back with the net. Well, you might not come back at all. You know, commercial fishing is the, the most dangerous occupation on this earth. But as I've told people, I was genetically bred not to quit. Mom and dad came from Croatia with nothing but ass and face. Was he a fisherman before he came here? He Croatia? was a kid, uh, about 11 years old, and he came to this country. Oh. And uh, he ended up being a real good boat captain because he grew up doing it. And then he went to war for four years. He served his time. And he came back, and he went also run other boats. And he eventually made enough money to, to build his own. The name of the boat is the FJG. My dad and mom were smart. They named it after my older sister, Frances, my brother, Joseph, and myself. That way nobody had any impartial. <laughs> and that's the same boat I own to this day. She's 54 years old. Wow. It's the last of its kind. It's a Biloxi Lugger, full two-inch wooden Cypress boat. You have it's a the, wooden boat? Yeah. I was born the same month the boat was launched. So it's my destiny. It's hard to think of it that way, but it is. Are there going to be noticeably less shrimpers? Oh, there is. I went out for the opening day. I did a little recon. BP guys told me, he said, well, you know, you, you caught 4,000 pounds. I said, yeah, it's not that much. I said, but understand this. There was only 11 boats where it normally would be 100, 110. Hmm. Well, I actually do have some shrimp. People fearing the product, we can't sell it. Nobody wants it. Right now, I'm promoting seafood. I did a benefit shrimp ball concert in Kansas City, Missouri, and I bring them all the shrimp. You know, I caught them. And just to show people, you know, and don't be scared anymore. We need you all to buy and demand domestic product. Or we're not going to make it. The only ones of us that are surviving are the ones that had stuff paid for before the slump, so to speak. Because if you had boats with notes, you didn't make it. And the only thing that keeps them going with this oil spill is the money that they're getting. And they're hoping it's going to be enough money until Mother Nature fixes this. That's the sad part about it. If this whole environment gets demolished, it wasn't good as a boat. It survived hurricanes. It survived Katrina. survived uh, Gustav. survived many regulations, but it may not survive this BP thing. 